Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. The Fiend made his return to WWE. Extra crispy version. Drew McIntyre and Sheamus finally had a pay-per-view caliber match on pay-per-view. And it looks like we're doing WrestleMania 30 all over again. Because Roman Reigns tapped out to Daniel Bryan in the main event. I'm a still injured Mr. Davis from that explosion last week, but I will find the person who tried to blow me up. More on that later. For now, please give us a subscribe, super kick that thumbs up button, and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news and review videos. Like my review of the biggest WrestleMania a pre-show of the year, WWE Fast Lane 2021, in about 10 minutes. No Caruso alert. The pre-show was actually noteworthy for a change. To see if Charlie Caruso would be doing her usual kickoff panel hosting duties, forebodingly for her WWE future, she wasn't. With Kayla Braxton presenting the pre-show and Kevin Patrick doing the backstage interviews. There's reports she's got a lot of heat backstage for being unpleasant to work with. Almost as important as Caruso was the United States title match on the pre-show, which saw our lead challenge Riddle with all his biker mice from Mars watching on from ringside, scarily positioned so you can see each one of them in a line from the side. It, it's like one half of the Captain America Civil War poster. If all the superheroes were gimps, Ali trash-talked his own faction throughout, pointing out this is how it's done by losing to Riddle in 10 minutes. The action between them was terrific as they're both fantastic wrestlers, but the booking around them has been abysmal. So abysmal, in fact, WWE appeared to be changing direction. Fightful Select revealed before the show that a high-level pitch was made, so perhaps from Vince McMahon himself, to break up. Retribution. This follows T-Bar deleting all his tweets and changing his account name. Rather than wait for Raw though, Reckoning and Slapjack walked off, while Mace and T-Bar chokeslammed their leader. Hopefully meaning everyone can just re-debut after Mania without their silly names. The main show began with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler defending their women's tag titles against Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. But how will they coexist? Answer. They won't. Jax pushed Belair onto a bank statement, causing Sasha to get annoyed with Bianca, and then rolled up by Shayna to lose. They argued afterwards, and Bianca pointed at the WrestleMania sign. This was like a TV angle. Big E and Apollo Crews then had a pretty badass five minutes of action with all the suplexes, but a lame ending where Apollo got his shoulders on the mat to lose. Crews kept beating up Big E afterwards, getting over the idea that while he lost, he stood tall. Because that's what I want from title challengers, to keep losing. And unless it's Daniel Bryan, this was like a TV angle. Our truth both lost and won back the 24-7 title to an old spice salesman. And in a literal booking crutch, Shane McMahon injured his leg whilst training earlier in the day because Shane's such a tough guy, does all the MMA training with the, the holds, Meaning he put Elias in his place to face Braun Strowman. Strowman beat him in four minutes with a power slam. This was like a TV angle. Three pretty inconsequential matches so far. Thankfully, Fastlane then got actually really good. Before we get on with the rest of the news, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor, Manscaped.com. Firstly, thank you to Manscaped, who have been sponsoring us at WrestleTalk here for over a year now, back when I could scream my big hairy balls directly into Laurie's face. That was our first video for them last February, and we've seen Manscaped go from strength to pube-sharing strength since, debuting their perfect package kit, the world first all-in-one men's grooming kit, and now they're calling up another product to the main roster of your sexiness. The new refined cologne signature scent by Manscaped. Refined. Refined. Refined by Manscaped. Refined by Manscaped. Refined by Manscaped. Refined. Refined by Manscaped. Oh my god. Oh. Refined by Manscaped. Refined by Manscaped. Calming and inviting, the scent introduces a light citrus burst before settling into the anchoring notes of vetiver and a woodsy masculine finish. Refined by Manscaped. And best of all for my body that's constantly trying to destroy itself, Refined is hypoallergenic, dye-free, paraben-free, and 100% vegan. 
So upgrade your Manscaped routine now by using my link in the video description below to get 20% off and free international shipping. Check out the refined cologne and pick up a perfect package kit if you haven't already for the lawnmower body trimmer, all deodorant and toner, and two free gifts. Support Wrestle Talk. Support Refined by Manscaped. After some lame comedy with Riddle trying to get Nakamura in on his scooter business at the ground level, we got a cracking grudge match between Shinsuke and Seth Rollins. They went back and forth playing the hits of sliding Germans, buckle bombs and reverse exploders, striking that great balance where you don't want either guy to lose, while leaving enough in the tank for a rematch later down the line. And the finish left you thinking maybe Nakamura could beat Rollins on another day, as Seth improvised to win, swinging his heel backwards after a missed knee and then a stomp for the win. Rhea Ripley is still coming <gasps> tomorrow, which is tonight on Raw. As they didn't announce this before the pay-per-view, I'm going to assume they only just decided it. Possibly with Charlotte rumoured to be in doubt for Mania. After two pay-per-view caliber matches on TV the last few weeks, we then got Sheamus and Drew McIntyre doing an actual pay-per-view match here. The fantastic opening video package helped elevate the feud beyond its presentation on TV too, charting both men's histories and friendships stretching back 20 years. With footage from their early matches in Iron Irish Whip Wrestling back in 2005. WWE's video editors are genuinely the best in the world. And it wasn't just the video package doing the work. Drew came out as the physical manifestation of Scotland with his country's flag painted on his face. Sadly, Seamus didn't come out in a green morph suit. That's Braun's spot. As the first two installments of their trilogy had already done a lot of the story work for them, they got to brawl outside right from the start, practically wrestling the entire first 10 minutes in the space between the ring apron and the announcer's desk. They then took the action to another level, even beyond their brawls on TV, fighting up into the Thunderdome with Drew throwing Sheamus through some of the fans, complete with actual explosion. Much like the main event, even though the winner was really predictable, the action and drama was enough to make you forget about backstage reports and WrestleMania plans, and you just sit there going, oh crap, I think Sheamus might actually do this, particularly after an excellent double punch of the bro kick over the barricade like their second Raw match, and a white noise off the barricade through the announcer's table, with the WrestleMania sign in the background as an excellent piece of visual storytelling. McIntyre got the win in the end though, shedding tears for having to do this to his longtime friend. Four and a half stars, easy, straight into... Randy Orton trying to beat up a woman. Bliss kept making supernatural things happen in their following semi-cinematic match. Ooh, spooky spooky. So Randy never actually got to RKO her, with more black vomit, fire blasts, teleportation, and telekinesis making the lighting rig crash down. All while the commentators just had to awkwardly pretend this was real. The Fiend eventually tore up through the canvas, looking all gnarly, burned and melted, hit a sister Abigail on Randy for Bliss to get the pin. The acting is good, the Fiend looks cool, but this storyline just isn't for me. In fact, I'm not even annoyed at it anymore, it's just there. Which I think is somehow even more depressing, considering how excited I was for The Fiend once upon a time. All the power to you though if you liked it, me not getting anything from it doesn't negate your own enjoyment. Let me know whether you're enjoying this storyline in the comments down below. WWE announced Hulk Hogan is co-hosting Wrestlemania with Titus O'Neil. See, it's okay, some of Hogan's best Mania co-hosts are from Tampa. And then came the epic main event. There were 45 minutes left for Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan. Roman main events in WWE have become their version of a carda, but instead of with wrestling, it's with Shakespearean character arcs. And Bryan here was the perfect foil. I really enjoyed KO's feud with Reigns, but there's something about Bryan that connects with everyone on a much deeper level. Because here we are again, seven years and a whole retirement later, where a part-time veteran returned to win at the Rumble to set up a singles match against 
the guy with the championship at WrestleMania, and all we want is for Brian to get added to make it a three-way. Roman brilliantly sold Brian's offense, going from confidence to, oh crap, I forgot how good Brian is, in an instant. Edge at ringside as the enforcer added that extra layer of drama too. You knew he'd get involved at some point, you just didn't know how. And after 25 minutes of great wrestling, it happened. Brian accidentally took out referee Rudy Charles, prompting Edge to jump in as the official. Jey Uso tried to help his cousin, prompting Brian to accidentally take out Edge with a chair. Brian locked Roman into the yes lock, and Roman tapped. Ever so subtly, with fear in his eyes, he tapped. Edge, annoyed he'd been hit by a chair though, used a chair on both men and stormed off, letting a new ref slide in and count Roman's pin. That was an amazing story, and if Meltzer's new report is true, it's an excellent way to set up WWE's new main event plan for WrestleMania 37. Much like me and your mum and your grandma, we're making it a three-way. What did you think of WWE Fastlane? Let me know in the comments down below and vote in our poll on a poll match on the community tab where 73% of you did indeed vote for Let's Do WrestleMania 30 again. Fastlane had a pretty lame first half, with it being just a standard episode of Raw or SmackDown, but an absolutely blinding second half, with Reigns vs. Bryan and Drew vs. Sheamus in particular being excellent. Sometimes it's how you leave them, folks. Fastlane is four out of five. But last night wasn't just about Fastlane, it was also about WWE's shock release of Andrade. Luke and I will have our full podcast live stream review of Fastlane on the WrestleTalk podcast channel later, so go subscribe over there, where I'll also be making a WrestleMania announcement of my own. But go watch my reaction to Andrade's release first by clicking the eye above my head or the link in the video description below. Here's a clip. But why Andrade? Why do they grant his release now after saying they wouldn't? I don't know. This is speculation on my part. He's engaged to Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair is one of their more featured performers. She's the most pushed person in all of their women's division. She's got the mainstream composure. She's the person you send to interviews to, to represent the company. She's the person you put in the WrestleMania main events for no reason. She's the person who always holds the title. She's the person they push as a baby face whether we like it or not. They want to keep her happy. And I bet having your fiance just booked into oblivion and then told to just sit in catering week after week, that's not gonna just make him frustrated, it's gonna make him unhappy. These are wrestlers. He's in the prime of his career. He's 31 years old. He doesn't want to sit in catering while he could be going out there and putting on amazing matches.